Hi, Ron Kerr here, going to show an interesting relationship between RMS velocities and interval velocities. Now, this is not my idea. I was taught this by Fred Hilterman, who is a legend in geophysics. So from an earlier chapter, I showed this relationship, how you go from near offsets to far offsets. You go through different layers, increasing velocities. You pick velocities where velocity increases to the right, time goes down, you get velocity semblances, you pick, 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 that flattens the gather. Now I'm more interested in this for this chapter, this semblance relationship on the right. And as we talked earlier, VRMS are the smooth velocities that are often used for time migration, and they're related to interval velocities, V int which are often used for depth migration. So let's isolate this and talk more about the relationship. Notice first that these RMS velocities are rather smooth. They change gradually down in time, whereas the interval velocities are more rugose, abruptly changing, and they change everywhere someone picked RMS velocities. Now the relationship is actually a mathematical relationship as devised by C. Hewitt Dix, whose picture is here. I got this off the SEG, Society of Exploration Geophysics, their Wikipedia page, and named after him, it's the Dix formula. And you can read all about it, and here's a mathematical equation. And to be honest, it's beyond my level of math these days. I knew this once when I was much younger. So I'm gonna show you a, a more intuitive, feel way to figure out the relationship. This is the mathematical way. Let's figure out the relationship this way, which was taught to me by Fred Hilterman again. So one thing you can notice is why is this interval faster and why is this interval slower when it's kind of a smoothly transitioning in the RMS picks, but it's not smoothly transitioning in the interval picks. Well, here's what Fred said. Draw a box between two picks, two adjacent picks. So one corner is this, or one pick is the corner of that box. One pick is the corner of the box there. And this can come in handy for a couple of ways. So you go straight up, and these are the RMS velocities. The RMS velocity here is up on this axis. The RMS velocity for this pick is up on the velocity axis up here. How does that relate to interval velocities? draw a diagonal from the lower left to the bottom right, and where this intersects the axis, that's the interval velocity. Now, Fred cautioned that that's not exactly the interval velocity, but it's a good estimate. It gives you an idea for the interval velocity. So the interval velocity between these two picks is roughly wherever this would intersect the axis. Now, for the formation below, you can see it's a narrower box. And I've drawn it in green between these two picks. It's narrow. You do the same thing, draw between the two corners of the box and where that intersects the, horizon, the velocity. That's the interval velocity for this interval. And you can see it's slower. So this interval here is faster. This interval here is slower. It's a pretty good trick, just to give you a ballpark idea of which intervals are faster and which intervals are, slow, are slower. Another thing between the relationship between RMS velocities and interval velocities is that if you pick them in time with RMS, trans transferring them to interval velocities can be a bit chaotic. Well, let's see why that is. Suppose I've made this second pick not exactly on the X, but just a little bit to the left of the X. Well, that changes the corners of the box. So if I draw up here, now in the red line, I have a slower interval velocity just by making an ever so slight difference pick at this semblance, my interval velocity has slowed down by actually quite a bit. Well, here I made slightly different picks up top and slightly different picks here. Draw the corner of the box in green and now I have a much faster interval velocity. So you can see how small changes in picking RMS can lead to big changes in interval velocity. So to summarize, 
RMS velocities, which are used often in time migration or to flatten gathers in the time domain. They are usually very smooth because it's more of an averaging. It includes velocities from all the way top to down. Interval velocities tend to be less smooth because they only include the, the interval in which you're defining the velocities. The Dix formula is the mathematical relationship. Small changes in RMS can lead to big changes in interval. And the shortcut trick of drawing a box around is a way that I use to help better understand the relationship. And again, this is a lesson taught to me for, by Fred Hilterman. And if you're unfamiliar with his work, he has published a lot of work in geophysics. Thank you very much.